In October 2004, dignitaries and city workers dressed in turn-of-the-century costumes gathered at New York's first subway station to celebrate the underground transit system's 100th birthday. On October the 27th, 1904, the subway took its first passengers for a subterranean ride. And ever since then, riders have been depending on it to get around the Big Apple. When the subway first opened, there was only one line from City Hall to 145th Street. The City Hall station, now closed to the public and only used as a turning circle for some trains, is the jewel in the crown of the massive subway system. Now there are 468 stations spanning the five boroughs. The subway is a vital part of New York City life and in many ways shaped its growth. Uh, before the subways, most people had to work within living distance of their homes. Just think about how a good subway system allowed us to expand, allowed people to have better lives for their families. They didn't have to live literally next door. Without the ability to get around easily, New York would not have expanded into the five boroughs. Skyscrapers would not have been built to house new residents of the fast-paced city, and the financial district would not have been able to rely on a steady stream of workers. In many ways, the subway's expansion and growth over the past ten decades matches the growth of the Big Apple itself. A hundred years ago, when the subway opened, it was only able to carry 350,000 passengers a day. Now it moves four and a half million passengers daily. The first subway had 9.1 miles of track. Today's spans 842 miles. If laid end to end, the New York City subway tracks would run from New York to Chicago. The City Hall station was the starting off point for a day of anniversary festivities when New Yorkers, led by Mayor Michael Bloomberg, took a nostalgic trip down memory lane to celebrate the last hundred years of underground transit. Like many things in New York, the subway runs seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and even offers express fast services in the dead of the night. It's come a long way from the days of one line running up the center of Manhattan. The maze of lines and stations has given rise to a new extreme sport, the New York Subway Challenge. In 2006, Don Batachewski and Matt Green made a bid to travel through every station in the New York subway system in less than 25 hours, 11 minutes, the previous record. They said they were motivated to take the challenge as a tribute to the influence the subway system has had in shaping the city of New York. Well, we'll, we'll be eating and drinking as little as possible to minimize bathroom breaks. Uh, I don't imagine we're going to be doing a lot of sleeping. Uh, if, if we do, we're going to try to set some alarm clocks because, boy, that would be bad to miss a station because we snooze through it. Matt and Don recorded telephone reports and kept a log of when they boarded and disembarked each train. Time and bathroom access was limited, so the friends survived on beef jerky and water. Me and my friend like transportation a lot. Uh, we're really into it, and it's a very important part of New York City. It's the best way to get around. And then on top of that, it's a great way to see the city. It's only $2. You get to go through the whole thing. We're young. We have the time. So now's, now's when we wanted to do it. The rules for the attempt were set up by the previous record holder, Peter Sampson, who created the Amateur New York Subway Riding Committee, which lays down the do's and don'ts of such a record challenge. New Yorkers have long had a love-hate relationship with the subway. In the 70s, it was feared because of the number of muggings on the trains and platforms. Then, in the 80s and 90s, it received a major overhaul and is now used by 1.4 billion people every year. Matt and Don didn't attract much attention from seasoned New York strap hangers, as subway passengers are known, as they rushed in and out of trains during rush hour. The young lawyers said the thrill of the chase was keeping them motivated. The adrenaline is still pumping, strangely enough, given that all we're doing is sitting on a train. A full day and night after they started riding the rails, Matt and Don made it, and with more than an hour to spare, clocking in at an impressive 24 hours and two minutes. Their record was still standing in 2008.